Slowly causing tension to be exerted on the control cable and opening the terminal device. Returning the shoulder to the starting position relaxes the tension on the cable, allowing the rubber bands to close the fingers of the terminal device. Biscapular abduction is sometimes used to supplement the basic control motion of shoulder flexion. Like shoulder flexion, biscapular abduction is an excellent motion for the generation of force and provides adequate excursion. Notice that here the amputee uses biscapular abduction as the prime body control motion when it is desirable to open and close the terminal device while working with the prosthesis close to the body. In this position, shoulder flexion cannot be used and scapular thoracic motion is substituted in order to operate the terminal device. The operating sequence used by the below elbow amputee may be summarized as follows. The elbow is used to place the terminal device in the desired position of function. Shoulder flexion or biscapular abduction opens the fingers of the device and relaxing the shoulder allows the hook fingers to be closed by the rubber bands. The major points to be remembered about the single control system are the function of the housing, the single control cable, the purpose of the harness, and finally, the body control motions. Two control cables are used in the operating system of the above elbow prosthesis. In our discussion of above elbow prostheses, we will consider the mechanics of the two cable system the harness, body control motions, and the operating sequence. First, the mechanics of the two cable system. This system consists of two separately operated but functionally interdependent cables. One cable is used to both flex the prosthetic elbow and also to operate the terminal device. The second cable is used to lock and unlock the prosthetic elbow. This above elbow amputee demonstrates the interdependent function of the two cables. Tension on the elbow flexion terminal device cable first causes the prosthetic elbow to flex. Next, the elbow is locked in position by tension being exerted on the elbow lock control cable. With the elbow locked in position, Additional tension on the elbow flexion terminal device cable causes the fingers of the terminal device to open. We will examine the function of each of the two cables in turn. The housing through which the elbow flexion terminal device cable passes is not continuous, but is split in two separate parts. The proximal portion of the housing is fastened to the socket by the proximal retainer. The distal portion of the split housing is secured to the forearm by a component called the elbow flexion attachment. As will be demonstrated later, the location of the elbow flexion attachment relative to the elbow joint center has a direct effect on the force and cable excursion which the amputee must generate to flex the elbow. The cable which flexes the elbow and also operates the terminal device originates at the harness, enters the proximal part of the housing, leaves the upper portion of the housing above the elbow center, enters the distal portion of the housing, passes through the elbow flexion attachment, leaves the housing distal to the mid-forearm level, and terminates at the operating lever of the terminal device. In this illustration, you can see the split in the housing. Since the housing is in two separate pieces and the control cable passes in front of the elbow axis, tension on the cable causes the prosthetic elbow to flex. Notice how the two pieces of housing move closer together as tension is applied to the cable. If elbow flexion is arrested, as illustrated here, tension on the cable is transmitted to the terminal device and causes the hook fingers of the terminal device to open. 
A separate control cable is used to lock and unlock the prosthetic elbow. The standard above elbow unit, as seen in this cutaway model, allows the amputee to lock the elbow in any of 11 positions of elbow flexion. The lock works on an alternator principle, pull and release to lock, pull and release to unlock. One complete cycle is necessary for locking and one complete cycle for unlocking. Three-fourths inch excursion and a force of approximately two pounds is necessary to cycle the elbow unit. To summarize the mechanics of the above elbow control system, tension on the elbow flexion terminal device cable flexes the elbow. The elbow is locked, the terminal device operated, the elbow is unlocked, and the elbow allowed to extend. Elbow flexion, elbow lock, terminal device operation, the elbow is unlocked, and the forearm is lowered. The elbow flexion attachment location can affect both the force and excursion required to flex the elbow. In this illustration, the elbow flexion attachment is positioned two inches distal to the elbow center. The arrows show how the cable moves away from the elbow center as the elbow is flexed. With the elbow flexion attachment located two inches from the elbow center, approximately four inches of cable excursion is necessary to flex the elbow through its full range of motion. If we use a spring scale to measure the amount of force necessary to raise the forearm to 90 degrees, we notice that only two pounds is required. With the elbow flexion attachment positioned at only one inch from the joint center, the arrows indicate that the movement between the cable and joint center is less than it was with the elbow flexion attachment in a more distal position. Now, the force required to flex the elbow is tripled to six pounds while the amount of cable excursion required for complete elbow flexion is reduced from four inches to two inches. Therefore, the closer the elbow flexion attachment is located to the elbow center, the smaller the excursion required, but the greater the force requirement. It is impractical for the amputee to attempt to lift any significant amount of weight in the terminal device of an above elbow prosthesis which is controlled by a two cable system. To understand why this is so, the viewer must realize that as tension is placed on the cable in an effort to flex the elbow joint, the force is first transmitted to the terminal device and tends to cause the hook to open, releasing the object. 